share a couple of verses here this morning before we go into our next song. In Philippians 2 verse 13 it says, for God is working in you, giving you the desire to obey him and the power to do what pleases him. And in Hebrews 13 20 to 21 it says, and now may the God of peace who brought again, <clears throat> excuse me, our Lord from the dead equip you with all you need for doing his will. May he produce in you through the power of Jesus Christ all that is pleasing to him. Jesus is the great shepherd of the sheep by an everlasting covenant signed with his blood. To him be glory forever and ever. Amen. And I was reading, <clears throat> excuse me, sorry, these verses this morning and um, I don't, I don't know where you guys are coming from this morning, what kind of situation you're in right now, what kind of circumstance. Um, but I just felt so encouraged reading those words that not only does God call us to walk in his ways, to walk in obedience to his word and to the spirit, but he also equips us 
And he gives us the power of the Holy Spirit, the same power that raised Christ from the dead is inside of us, is with us, goes before us and behind us and beside us. And so as we sing this next song, let's just remember that. And whatever you're walking through right now, whatever you brought into this room, uh, let's just bring that before him and invite him to lead us.
So Jesus, we just thank you this morning. Thank you that you are so faithful, that you are so dependable. God, that you are um, a solid foundation. And God, I just pray this morning that you would help us to um, just understand what you want to say to us, open our ears to hear and our hearts to respond. Um, Give us hearts that long for you, hearts that desire you, hearts that want to be faithful in every season and go where you lead us. I just pray for Grace this morning. Would your spirit be upon her? Would you speak through her the things that you want to say to us? In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Feel free to be seated. Before, uh, before I dismiss uh, the kids, um, as we were worshiping, I just, I just feel that I feel a sense that the Lord wants to. I think that there are people here who the Lord is 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 calling you to something. And I don't know what that is exactly, uh, only you do. But I just, I sense the Holy Spirit just saying, have faith, trust me, take that next step. And so I, I just, I wanna share with you from Luke chapter 12, verse 32, where he says, do not be afraid, little flock, for your father has been pleased to give you the kingdom. So I don't know where you're at. I don't know if that's a word for you, but I just sensed in my heart that there was someone that needed to hear the call to just have faith and to trust and to know that God is with you and whatever that next step looks like, that you can take it in trust. And so I just wanted to share that um, as I felt the Lord impress that upon my heart. So. Anyway, welcome here to you all. I hope that you are blessed to to be with you because I know that we are blessed to have you here. Um, We would like to dismiss our kids to Kids Church at this time. So if you are aged four to grade five, uh, there is a Kids Church time dedicated to you. And just a reminder that over the summer months, um, our Kids Church time is only going to be happening in the second service. So during the first service, we'll have coloring sheets and those things available for kids of that age, Uh, but our kids' church ministry will only be happening in the second service. So just wanted to let you know, aware of that. If you have children younger, our kids' zone available for kids age two to three-ish, that's going to be available in both services. So just wanted to let you guys know that as well. Um, I'm going to lead us in a time of prayer now, so I would just invite you to join with me as we come before the Lord together in prayer. And just to anchor our hearts as we move into prayer, Psalm 104 says this, Praise the Lord, my soul. Lord, my God, you are very great. You are clothed with splendor and majesty. The Lord wraps himself in light as with a garment. He stretches out the heavens like a tent and lays the beams of his upper chambers on their waters. Then proceeding forward a little bit later, he waters the mountains from his upper chambers. The land is satisfied by the fruit of his work. He makes grass grow for the cattle and plants for people to cultivate, bringing forth food from the earth. Heavenly Father, you are the Almighty God. And as your word has shared, you indeed are very great. You are clothed in splendor and majesty. God, you are high and exalted as we have just sung. Every crown belongs to you. Every worthy attribute we can ever think of, it belongs to you and to you alone. O Lord, you are worthy of it all, God. And yet at the same time, you care for us. You care for your creation. You care for this world and for our lives. 
You make the grass grow for the cattle. You plant the plants for the people to cultivate, bringing forth food from the earth. Yes, you are high and exalted, and yet you care about the intimate details of our lives. And so we give you heartfelt praise and thanks. Father, I want to ask and pray right now for many farmers across our province, as many of them need rain for their crops. God, we ask and pray in Jesus' name that over the month of July that you would send forth timely rains, appropriate rains for what the needs are, and that you would just shower them in abundance across our province. We look to you, God, because you are the creator and the sustainer of all. So we look to you and we ask that you would do this, God, in Jesus' name. Looking ahead, Lord, we also anticipate a, a, a summer full of exciting ministry, and we are thankful for the opportunities that we have to partner with you. God, we thank you for VBS that's going to be happening this week. Thank you for Pastor Ashlyn and her team and all the work they have done to prepare for this event. And God, we pray over the hearts of our children who will be coming this week. We pray for the hearts of those students who know you and who have a relationship and who have faith in you, Jesus. God, we pray that this week at VBS, their faith in you would grow, their love for you would grow, and their trust in who you say that you are, that it would deepen in profound and beautiful ways. I pray for those as well, God. We, we pray for those who are coming this week who don't know you yet, who have not surrendered their lives to you. And God, you have said through your word, let not... Don't put a stumbling block for the children to come to me. And so we pray right now, God, that for all of those kids who would come this week who do not yet know you, that the gospel would be clearly proclaimed and heard, and that good seeds would be sown this week, and that it would land in tender soil in their hearts, God. And we pray that in all of this, you would be glorified. We think as well about camp ministries across our province this summer. We thank you for the tremendous impact that camps have across our province, and we just pray for them now, Lord. We lift up many of the camps that maybe we are familiar with or that we are connected to. We pray for those leaders. We pray for those who will be volunteering, for those who will be cooking meals, who will be organizing events, and who will be sharing your word. God, we pray your blessing. We pray the anointing of your Holy Spirit to go forward in power and in love in these camp ministries. I pray for profound Holy Spirit encounters for those kids over the course of the summer. I pray that the word of God would go forward in boldness and in truth, and that it would land in good soil and bear much fruit, God. We pray as well, Lord, for those as the summertime is a great time of rest and rejuvenation and getting some vacation time. I pray for all of those over the course of the summer who will be taking some vacation time. God, we ask and pray that it would be a great time, not just of, of rest, but I pray of the restoration of their hearts, of their souls, and of their bodies. God, I, I thank you that you lead us to green pastures. You lead us beside streams of water. You restore our souls. And so I pray for anyone who is weary right now and looking forward to that vacation time. God, may it not just be a blessed time where there's lots of joy and fun things to do, but I pray, Lord, that it would be a deep restoration of their souls, that they would encounter you in profound new ways and experience that living water and, and touches the deep parts of their lives that need to be touched. So I ask that you would do this, Jesus, for the sake of your name and the sake of your honor. And I thank you, Lord, that we can have faith that you hear and answer these prayers. And all God's people said, amen. Amen. Well, Typically at this time, I would ask our ushers to come forward and take up our morning offering. However, over the course of the summer, we're going to hit pause on our passing of the plate. We will resume that in fall. Uh, but if you came prepared to give this morning, we have our giving station set up in the back foyer, and uh, we would be happy to help you out there. Just want to say thank you for your generosity towards us as a church. Thank you for helping to fuel the mission of God here in our church family, and we deeply appreciate your generosity. 
I have a few announcements before Grace will come to share. Um, like I had shared, uh, we have VBS that's going to be starting this week, and that starts first thing bright and early tomorrow morning. So if you have children who will be participating in VBS, we really want to encourage you to make sure that you come for 845 in order to register them. Uh, there's just a few details to make sure that we all get on the same page for tomorrow morning. And I just would encourage you, please be praying for our VBS throughout the week. It's a lot of fun. I know there's lots of good things that happen, but it also takes a lot of energy and coordination. So please just be praying throughout the week that God would really meet us here throughout that time. Uh, and again, if you have children with that, please make sure to come for 845. Also, coming up in less than a month's time, we have our Global Leadership Summit that's going to be happening here on August 3rd and 4th. There is still room to register if you would like to. You can either do that online through our website, or you can talk to Pastor Cal. He's going to be at the information desk in the back foyer there. If you have any questions pertaining to the Global Leadership Summit, he'll be able to answer any of those. And um, again, that's going to be happening August 3rd and 4th. I also wanted to let you know that if you are under 25 and you are interested in uh, coming to the Global Leadership Summit but maybe can't afford it, I have four available tickets for you, okay? I have, only have four. So if you're under 25 and you would like to take part in this event, come and talk to me after the service, and I would love to help connect the dots for you on that. But this is, I, I, I got to submit it before tomorrow. So you have today to talk to me. So just putting that out there. Uh, that is all the pressing news that I have for you right now. I will uh, invite Grace to come forward. She's going to share the word with us this morning. If you guys have any other questions or concerns or would like to connect with us in any way, please feel free to reach out to us through our website at ebenezerbaptist.ca, or you can come talk to any of us as staff. And with that, I will turn it over to Grace to share the word with us this morning. I'll just do a quick test. I am live. Has it been a year already? <laughs> Typically, um, you know that it's the summer series when you see me come up and make my once-a-year debut in the pulpit here, and, uh, <laughs> and here I am again. Um, for those of you that don't know who I am, my name is Grace uh, Sawatsky, and I serve on the pastoral team here at Ebenezer. Um, <clears throat> if you don't mind, I'd just like to ask you, just because I need it, uh, to just bow with me for a word of prayer real quickly. Father, um, you know how I have wrestled in preparing for this morning. And I am so aware, Father, that any words of my own are going to be inadequate this morning. I also know that your word is powerful and it is uh, able to penetrate the hearts and change our hearts in a way that no human words could. And so I ask, Father, that it would be your words that would be used this morning to speak to us. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, last week we began our summer series on the kingdom of heaven um, as it is revealed through the parables that Jesus told while he was on earth. And Pastor Cal introduced our series by giving us a definition of what the kingdom of heaven is. And he said that the kingdom of heaven is the place, realm, or domain where Jesus reigns. John the Baptist uh, was the first one to give reference to the kingdom of heaven. And his message everywhere that he went was, repent of your sins, turn to God, for the kingdom of heaven is near. This was a welcome message for many who were weary of living under their present political regime. They longed for a new kingdom and a new ruler that would set them free from the rule they were under um, and hopefully maybe even put them in the place of the upper hand in society for a change. And when Jesus comes and he follows uh, John the Baptist, his message also echoed John the Baptist. He says, repent of your sins, turn to God, for the kingdom of heaven is near. 
In fact, Jesus' entire ministry in the three and a half years that he um, had a public ministry, it all revolved around proclaiming what the kingdom, what this kingdom was like and inviting people to become citizens of this new kingdom that he referred to as the kingdom of heaven and sometimes the kingdom of God. It was the calling to join a new kingdom that was vastly different from the earthly kingdom that they were presently part of. And while some understood and received his message, for many this message caused confusion and even opposition to Jesus and his uh, kingdom message. You see, in the minds of his listeners, they might have imagined a physical kingdom similar to the one that they were presently part of complete with a king and subjects and laws and political agendas and borders. The people were longing to be set free from the tyrannical rule of the Romans. They wanted to see the birth of a new kingdom because the present one wasn't serving them well. It was oppressive and cruel. They didn't like it and they longed for something different. They may have thought that this kingdom would come to be through force and compliance. They would have anticipated a strong and ruthless leader that demanded allegiance and would use force if necessary because this was the only kind of kingdom that they knew. Still others, like religious leaders, may have been threatened by this talk of a new kingdom. What would this mean to their positions of authority among the people? What would happen for their, to their carefully constructed systems of power and way of life? And so often it was confusing. People found it difficult to understand this message of the kingdom. And Jesus understood that. And he dedicated all of his time teaching about the kingdom of heaven and using parables or stories to explain what this kingdom is like. Unfortunately, many of Jesus' audience were stuck in their concept of an earthly kingdom. And Jesus said that if they truly wanted to understand the mysteries of the kingdom, they were going to have to really listen with a responsive heart if they were going to understand. And that's why I titled my sermon today, How Is Your Hearing? The story has also uh, been titled in many uh, of your Bibles as the parable of the sower. And although it's um, found in three of our Gospels, we're going to consider the, the account in Matthew chapter 13. And just to set the, the, let you know the setting is that it was uh, later in the day and Jesus had just left the uh, house that he was staying at in Capernaum. And he went to sit beside the lake with his disciples. And it didn't take long for a crowd to gather around him. Um, their reasons for coming were probably almost as varied as the number of people that were there. Much like here today. Um, the reasons for you being here this morning are probably... Um, different uh, from uh, like varied and so he um, he got into a boat and he sat in the boat and he told many stories in the forms of parables such as this one Jesus begins a farmer or in some translations it says sower went out to plant some seeds and as he scattered them across his field, some seeds fell on a footpath, and the birds came and ate them. Other seeds fell on shallow soil with underlying rock beneath. See, the seeds sprouted quickly because the soil was shallow, but the plants soon wilted under the hot sun. And since they didn't have deep roots, they died. Other seeds fell among thorns that grew up and choked out the tender plants. And still other seeds fell on fertile soil, and they produced a crop that was 30, 60, and even 100 times as much as had been planted. And then he says these words, Anyone with ears to hear should listen 
and understand. Well, we have here a picture of a farmer uh, with a, perhaps a bag in front of him full of seed. And this farmer or sower is reaching into his bag of seed and generously throwing the seed out onto the ground. He's not particularly concerned about where the seed falls. He just sows the seed, and wherever it falls, it falls. Some of that seed falls on a hard path, and there's no chance for that seed to even um, root. And so it just sits on top of the path for the birds to come and eat. Next, we have a thin layer of soil that finds its way onto rocky ground, and there's just enough uh, soil for the seed to sprout. But because of that thin layer of soil that sits on rock, the seed can't send any roots deep, uh, deep enough to, um, to actually find moisture and establish a strong root system. And so then when the sun comes out, it is scorched, and it soon withers and dies out. And we have a third soil and we, that we hear about, and this soil has many weeds. And although the seed sprouts initially, so also do the weeds. And eventually the weeds get to be so many that they overwhelm the planted seed, and it too is choked out. There is not enough space for both the seed and the weeds. And then finally, Jesus tells us, about the seed that falls on soft, fertile soil. And these seeds grow deep roots and produce a bountiful crop, more than had even been sown. And then, of course, those words at the end. Anyone who has ears to hear should listen and understand. Why would Jesus make that, uh, that statement? Isn't that why the people were gathered to hear? Maybe not. It's not certainly that some people had ears and other people didn't have ears. They all had ears. But maybe they came with a, a different intent in how they are going to listen. When my son was uh, three or four years old, he, um, he rarely stopped talking. In fact, in grade one, he, uh, <laughs> the teacher sent home a note saying that, well, you know, he, he really, um, he kind of interrupts things uh, in the classroom. And when I asked him why, you know, why he was doing that, he says, well, Mom, I just have a lot of important things to say. <laughs> he was the youngest of three children, and the two above him were sisters. <laughs> and so when his sisters were in school, he would sit and he would chatter at me while I worked. And one day, I guess I was uh, a little more distracted than I thought. And um, you know what I'm talking about, right? If you've ever been a mom or listened to, to children, and you, you, know, you hear something being said and you're going, uh-huh, uh-huh, yeah, oh, mm-hmm, yeah, sure. Sure, that's a really dangerous one because especially if you haven't been tuned in to what they just asked you. So my son were, and I were sitting at my kitchen table, and he's talking away, and I'm responding with grunts and syllables and uh-huhs, and suddenly he grabs my face, and he turns it towards him, and he says, Mom, listen with your eyes. How many of you uh, listen closely to flight attendants give instructions uh, before you leave on your flight. I would say that for most of us, especially if we've flown more than a few times, would have to admit that we don't listen very well, if at all, <laughs> and we're busy doing other things while these poor flight attendants uh, do their, their uh, speech for us. But what if you heard the pilot come on the speaker and he said, Good afternoon, everyone. Um, we've just lost four of our engines. Please listen to the flight attendant as he instructs you on what to do to prepare for a water landing. <laughs> I dare say our listening would go up. We'd sit up tall. We'd pay attention. 
Well, you know, the message of the kingdom of God was all that Jesus talked about. And he said, listen up. If you've got ears to hear, listen carefully. Pay attention, because there's a lot at stake here. Jesus knew what was at stake if people failed to understand. And so he pleads with them to listen attentively and to seek to understand. Jesus returns to his story uh, to illustrate uh, to his disciples what this, these different kinds of ways it is that we listen to the message of the kingdom. And the way that we listen is determined by the condition of our hearts. So let's return to the story. Jesus says, now listen to the explanation of the parable about the farmer planting seeds. The seed that fell on the footpath represents those who hear the message about the kingdom and don't understand it. And so the evil one comes and snatches away the seed that was planted in their hearts. The seed on the rocky soil represents those who hear the message and immediately receive it with joy. But since they don't have deep roots, they don't last long. They fall away as soon as they have problems or are persecuted for believing God's word. The seed that fell among the thorns represents those who hear God's word, but all too quickly the message is crowded out by the worries of this life, the lure of wealth, and so no fruit is produced. The seed that fell on good soil represents those who truly hear and seek to understand God's word. And they produce a harvest of 30, 60, and even 100 times as much as had been planted. Jesus draws a parallel between how the soil responds to the seed and how the human heart responds to the word of God. The message of the kingdom is the word of God. And in fact, a man's reception of God's word was determined by what condition his heart was in. Let's go back to the soil that falls on a hard path. And Jesus says, uh, that's like a heart that is very hard, and the word of God just falls on deaf ears. Maybe they've already made up their minds that the word of God is not for them. They hear the words, but they don't let it penetrate their heart at all. It's just simply hitting their eardrums and bouncing right off again. And you know, Satan is right there. Um, helping them to forget it as quickly as they hear it. And so it doesn't have an opportunity to penetrate their heart, to grow deep, and they walk away completely unaffected by the word of God. William Barclay, a professor of divinity, um, said once that parables conceal truth from those who are either too lazy to think or too blinded uh, by prejudice to see. It puts the responsibility fairly and squarely on the individual. They reveal truth to those who desire truth, and they conceal truth from those who do not wish to see the truth. Next, we have the seed that falls on a thin layer of soil that covers the rock, and you've seen that. The seed initially springs up very quickly, but because the rock prevents the roots from going deep, um, the plant just never develops that strong root system so that it can tap into the moisture underground. And so when adversity comes, like the sun scorching, you know, scorching sun beating down on this little plant, the plant soon withers and dies. Well, this soil, Jesus says, represents the heart that initially responds eagerly to the message of the kingdom, but maybe it's purely an emotional response. That's where it stays. This heart doesn't ever go deeper than that first emotional response, and their faith remains shallow. They don't work to go deeper in their understanding. They just want the excitement of the new. 
And when trials or suffering come, especially because of their faith, it just gets too hard. And they abandon their initial excitement and turn away from God. They hadn't anticipated that living uh, according to this new kingdom would be so hard. And they lack the spiritual depth and maturity to weather the storms. When the going gets hard, they fall away from the message that they first embraced. The third soil Jesus talks about is the soil that takes root and grows. But eventually the weeds that are allowed to grow alongside the plant unchecked, well, they begin to choke it out. And while the plant continues to live, it bears no fruit. Jesus says that this weed-filled so filled soil represents the response of someone who hears the word of God. And there may even be some growth initially. But then, you know, the things of this world pull them away from the word, from the things of God. This person begins to be distracted by the pursuit of wealth or power or just simply worldly pleasures. And before long, it too becomes unfruitful. The soil filled with thorns definitely translates into our overcrowded lives as well. It's so easy for us to get distracted um, from, you know, the, the kingdom of God to the lesser things, even good things. And before we know it, all of a sudden, the word of God doesn't have first place in our lives. We're not, we don't even have time for it, hardly. And that happens uh, to all of us. If the weeds, weeds, which are all the distractions, are left unchecked in our lives, eventually, that first thing of first importance, the word of God, becomes fourth or fifth or sixth or non-existent. Well, the last kind of soil that Jesus talks about is a soft, pliable, and fertile. In this soil, the seed can allow its roots to go deep into the soil, and the plant begins to get nourished by the soil, and the, the roots become strong and steady. And when there's drought or scorching sun, that plant is going to be sustained by the root below. The last kind of soil that Jesus talks about represents the heart of those who hear the word of God, who respond to it, who allow it to, to grow deep into their lives. And the result is that not only is there growth, there is fruit like nothing they could have imagined. Their lives produce more than a uh, hundred times, 60 times, and 30 times what was seeded to begin with. Their lives produce fruit. And that fruit looks like taking on the character of Jesus in our own lives. It looks like living according to Jesus' ways. And it looks like us joining him in his mission to continue to spread the word with others. These are the people who are in the kingdom of heaven. Now listen up. <laughs> because here is the secret to this whole parable. Jesus is both the sower and he is the seed. This is so important. And so I say to you, if you have ears to hear, Listen and understand. I'm going to read from John chapter 1 that talks about Jesus as being um, the word, the message of the kingdom. It's not going to be on the screen behind you. We're going to test your hearing. So listen attentively. In the beginning, the word already existed, and the word, Jesus, was God. He existed in the beginning with God. God created everything through him, and nothing was created except through him. The word, Jesus, 
gave life to everything that was created, and his life brought light to everyone. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness can never extinguish it. God sent a man, John the Baptist, to tell about this light so that everyone might believe because of his testimony. John himself was not the light. He was simply a witness to tell about the light. The one who is the true light, who gives light to everyone, was coming to the world. He came into the very world that he created, but the world didn't recognize him. He came to his own people, and even they rejected him. But to all who believed him and accepted him, he gave the right to become children of God. They are reborn, not with a physical birth resulting with, from human passion or plan, but a birth that comes from God. And so the word became human and made his home among us. He was full of unfailing love and faithfulness, and we have seen his glory, the glory of the Father's one and only Son. No one has ever seen God, but the unique one who is himself God is near to the Father's heart, and he has revealed God to us. This is the message that we can't afford to miss. Not only is Jesus the sower of the seed, but he is the actual seed, the very word of God to us. He was God coming down from heaven, living among us, and showing us the way to God. Jesus came as both the sower of this message, and he was the message itself. God so loved this world that he sent his only son to earth to show us the way to himself. And if we don't get this, we not only miss out on the kingdom of God, but we miss Jesus himself, who is the way to God. It's not that hard to understand, really. It just requires the right heart. Jeremiah 29, 13 says, You will seek me, and you will find me when you seek me with all your heart. The earnestly seeking heart finds Jesus and pledges allegiance to his kingdom and to his reign in their life. The earnestly seeking heart can sustain the hardships of life and will not fall away when it gets tough to follow Jesus. The earnestly seeking heart guards itself from the things of this world that would distract or even choke out their faith. The earnestly seeking heart seeks first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And the earnestly seeking heart has an insatiable longing to know Jesus. If we miss out on Jesus, we miss out on the kingdom of heaven because Jesus said, I am the way and the truth and the life, and no one comes to the Father except through me. I'm going to ask the worship team to make their way up here while I finish. And I have some questions uh, for us this morning as we conclude. How, how good is your hearing? <laughs> Meaning, actually, what is the condition of your heart? It's possible for us to, you know, just as in Jesus' day in the crowd, it was possible for people to hide in the crowd some that were absolutely opposed to, the, to Jesus and his message. There were people there that were just curious. There were people there that was like it was a thing to do, so they're there. But not really listening, half-heartedly listening. And it's actually possible for us to hide out in a crowd like this, mor like this, this morning as well. So how's your heart, your heart uh, 
uh, has your heart hardened to the word of God and that the word of God can't even penetrate your heart? Has your once eager heart fallen away from faith because it was harder than you expected? Has your heart become so distracted by other things, activities, even good things, so that there is little to no room left for Jesus or his message in your life? And therefore, you haven't seen growth for a long time. I couldn't, you know, the songs this morning that Tamara chose were just so convicting to me this morning as well. And as I listened to all of us sing, and I couldn't help but think, like, what kind of hearts are we singing this with? <laughs> are they just words that we're singing, kind of coming out of our mouth, but doesn't even reach our heart? We barely even know what we're singing? Or um, are the words, you know, as the deer pants for water, so my soul longs for you. This is the kind of heart that will understand the mysteries of the kingdom of God and will indeed, um, G Jesus will reign in your life. Regardless of where you're at this morning, regardless of what condition your heart is in today, the good news is that we don't have to stay where we are. Because of the work of Jesus, a new heart is possible. In fact, in Ezekiel 36, 26, it says that even the heart that is hard can be made pliable and soft again. God says, I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit in you. He will remove you from your heart of stone, remove from you your heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh. It's just ours to seek with our whole heart. A new heart begins with Jesus' word to us, repent, turn back to God. Ask him for a new heart, a heart that will truly lean in to listen. Don't rob yourself of time spent uh, seeking to understand the word of God. He has promised that we will find him when we seek him with all our heart. But you know, it's not for the faint of heart. Because Jesus said, you're actually going to need to die to your own agenda and your own wants and embrace his. But when you do, he's promised that you will find true life. A life that produces good fruit in your life. A life that promises you a place in his kingdom with Jesus as your ruling king. Let's pray. Lord, help us not to miss out on you because of our hard or shallow or distracted and crowded hearts. Help us to seek you and your kingdom with all our hearts. Thank you for your promise that when we make you our first priority, that we will uh, we'll find you and the life that our hearts long for. You are the only way to God. You are the truth. And you alone have the words of eternal life. Amen. While the worship team uh, sings, leads us in our closing song, um, maybe you want to take time to reflect on the condition of your heart. I know I had to this week. And I had to do some repenting of my own. And maybe that's you too this morning. You can pray right where you are and talk to God about that heart. There's space here at the altar if you want to just come and take some time to meet with God on your own. But don't leave here without um, responding to whatever the Spirit has been speaking to you about your heart condition this morning. If you've come with concerns or burdens that you want someone to pray for um, with you about as, you know, find someone that you know here today and ask them to pray for you or as is our practice, there will be staff 
here at the front that will be happy to, to pray with you as well. And so I'm going to invite the team to close out our, our service. Why don't you guys stand with us as we respond? Just before we go, I'm going to lead you in a benediction. Now to him who is able to keep you from stumbling and to present you blameless before the presence of his glory with great joy. To the only God, our Savior, through Jesus Christ, our Lord, be glory, majesty, dominion, and authority before all time and now and forever. Amen. Thank you for being with us this morning. Make this week a week in which you seek God with all your heart. And we hope to see you back here next Sunday.